In this episode, we're going to create a drag line effect like this. This will be useful in any skill-based game where you need a visual representation of the force being applied to an object. Let's get started. We're starting with a default 2D Unity project. I've added a circle with a rigid body and a circle collider, and a bunch of squares as our environment, all with box colliders. So when we start the project, the ball falls and lands on the ground. What we want to do is click and drag to add force to it. So first up, we'll create a script called Dragline to add to our scene. It could go anywhere, but I'm going to drop it on the circle for want of a better place in this simple example. This has one advantage, that we can apply the force directly and don't need to pass in a reference to our rigid body. So there are two properties we want to deal with. We'll need a line renderer component to draw our drag line, and we'll need a reference to the rigid body. You'll notice the squiggly line here. That's saying we are shadowing an existing variable name, so we have to use the new keyword to ensure that we override that. We don't want to use the rigid body 2D directly as it's deprecated. In the start method, we'll get references to these two components. We attempt to find the references to them using get component. If the object doesn't contain them, then the result will be null, in which case we can add them in the script. We do exactly the same thing for the line renderer. There are two properties of the line renderer we want to set whilst we're here. Firstly, let's make sure it isn't being shown until we actually click and drag. So we set enabled to false. The drag line will have two points, the start and the end, so we can set that now too. In the update method, we want to capture the user input. There will be three states to deal with. Get mouse button down with index zero for when we press the left mouse button, also works with touch inputs. Then get mouse button for each subsequent frame where the button remains pressed, and this will be our dragging action. Then finally get mouse button up for releasing the left mouse button, at which point we'll apply our force and hide the line renderer. Okay, so when we press the button down, we want to grab the position we've clicked to start the line renderer from. Using the camera, we use the screen to world point function and pass in the mouse position. We'll need to offset the return point because the function returns the Z value at the camera. So if we try to draw it there, we'll be outside the camera clipping plane and it will be invisible. So we'll want to move it forwards so it's actually in the viewing plane. One copy of vector 3.4 is enough in this case. Now to set the points on the line renderer. Set the position zero, which will be the start to this location, and also position 1, which will be the end. We must set the end because if this isn't the first time you're using it, the second point may already be set and you may get a single frame of it drawn in the wrong place. We then set enable to true, the line render is drawn. When dragging, we just need to update the end position. So again, we get the location with screen to world point and set position 1 of the line renderer. When we release the mouse button, we disable the line renderer to hide it. To add the force to the ball, we can calculate the force by taking the difference of the start and end positions of our drag. We don't need to store these in a global variable because this is exactly the two points we've rendered with our line renderer. So we can access those using the get position method. We're going to use the impulse force mode so it's added instantly to our object. Okay, great, let's look at this. You'll notice it looks terribly pink. If you add the line renderer in the inspector, Unity helpfully adds a material to it so you can see it. However, when generated in code, it is absent. So we need to make sure we assign one. To this end, we'll add a material variable. And in Unity, I'm just using a material with the standard unlit particle shader on it. Whilst we're here, we'll add a couple of extra parameters to our line renderer to make it look pretty. You may want to taper it. So we add a start and an end width. And you may also want different color at the start and the end. I want the end to be a bit transparent. So we'll add two color variables. Finally, we add non-cap vertices, so it will round off the ends for us. Just using the default shown there, our drag line now looks like this. Amazing! I hope you found this tutorial useful in some way. As ever, the code is on GitHub and there is a link in the description below. See you next time!